Singapore Airlines is Asia's best ranked airline, placing first in the 2016 Global Passenger Survey. In an increasingly competitive market, the airline carries nearly 19 million passengers a year to over 60 destinations in more than 30 countries. During the airline's busiest week in December, our cameras have gained exclusive access to its inner workings. We're following the people crucial to its frontline and behind-the-scenes operations. The aircraft is coming in. I want two persons to be on top. Revealing a focus on tiny details. We did think this new thing is soggy. And mega tech. We'll show how hundreds of recruits are kept up to speed on the latest industry practices. And explore the toughest challenges the team face. Captain, we've got one of our uh, passengers uh, who's complaining of chest pain. Most of our flying life, everything is routine. But when something happens, you are expected to make a decision in a couple of seconds. People's lives are in our hands. We have to make sure that everything is perfect and it's safe for flying. Changi Airport, Singapore. The world's sixth busiest airport recorded a new high 58.7 million passengers in 2016. For Singapore Airlines, Changi is home base, with 240 flights arriving and departing every day. Among the busiest routes is Singapore-Hong Kong, with seven daily flights. Captain Alan Chan, one of the airline's most experienced pilots, is today flying SQ-860 to Hong Kong. I just enjoy flying. The first time I take an aircraft up, it's a different feeling. Otherwise, I just bow on there. The Hong Kong flight is a same-day turnaround. This evening, Captain Chan will complete the 5,000-kilometer round trip and land back in Singapore. Good morning. Morning. Hello. 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 Normally, I talk to the cabin crew. I want to know who's on board. And uh, it's always good to start a conversation and to set the tone. <laughs> it's 3 hours 15. First half we get some weather and uh, but second half is smooth. So Hong Kong weather is good. Thank you. Good for <laughs> Flying with the airline for 39 years, Captain Chan has logged over 140,000 flight hours. Before every takeoff, he carries out an inspection of the plane. As you approach the aircraft, you make sure that everything looks clear. I'm looking at the engine, there's no burst stride, there's no impact. The wings in front and behind, they're all in uh, perfect order. Captain Chan is flying the Airbus A380, the world's largest commercial passenger aircraft. Over 72 meters long, the equivalent of two blue whales, fully loaded, the plane weighs 575 tons. When you stand underneath the Airbus 380, and then you just wonder, this aircraft actually gets lifted. Get up in the air. Okay, all clear. Good. With the passengers on board, it's time for takeoff. Gentlemen, I'm Captain Alan Chan from the flight deck. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of you on this flight SQ 860 from Hong Kong. At the right speed, we pull up, we will sense the aircraft. There's a sense that, okay, it's coming up. You can sense it and you can feel it. You can just feel the aircraft leading off. And it's always a nice feeling. Yep, you're yeah, airborne. <laughs> Also hoping for smooth travels is flight attendant Jean Chai, who's been flying with the airline for seven years. My flight today will be Paris, and uh, I'll be looking forward to it because I think now it's really chilly in Paris, and it's a romantic place. Why not? For the 23 cabin crew heading to Paris, preparations begin at a briefing two hours before takeoff. 
In-flight supervisor Michael is in charge of the team. So please be on your alert when especially do your security checks. Uh, it can be a bit tight, especially on the CDG side. All right, just take note. The Paris flight is 14 hours long, with each crew member working two shifts. Help each other as much as you can, communicate. At the same time, don't forget your teamwork. You're all extraordinary in my eyes. So let's take these chances all. Let's have a great flight, guys. Thank you, Michael. Jean is now on her way to prepare the aircraft. 60 minutes to departure time. There's one team member integral to smooth days at Changi. Someone ready for all eventualities, from the minute to the earth shaking. You have got snowstorms in New York, you've got earthquakes in Japan, you've got typhoons in Hong Kong. This is my workhorse. This is Quentin Chin, the airline station manager for Singapore. Quinton oversees a team of over 300 people, dealing with 240 flights a day. Hey Imran, hi Quentin. How's our flights doing today? Um, 974 to Bangkok is full. Okay, uh, this is what we can do. If we have seats available on 976 and 978, we can transfer some of our passengers on those two flights. Great. Right. All right. In times of crisis, the station manager is the one in charge. The scale of operations is just tremendous. Sometimes you get flight delays, sometimes you have passengers with issues, with difficulties, and you have to be constantly on your toes because you just don't know what's around the corner. Here you go. Are you okay, you on back? All right, okay, come. A hub for the region, many of the 150,000 travelers coming through Changi every day are transiting. Delayed flights can mean missed connections. For Singapore Airlines, Quinton's team are the problem solvers. And a problem is coming his way. We are rushing off to Terminal 2 right now. I have a flight coming in late from Delhi, which is SQ401. And we have a total of 28 passengers who will misconnect their flight. We're just going to organize our resources so that we can intercept these passengers as they are coming off the aircraft. We're going to give them their new boarding passes and just let them know that all is going to be okay. Be bringing their new boarding passes for the affected passengers. We need to get them to sign the immigration form. If not, they won't be able to go to the hotels. Okay. Good. Yeah. We'll ask the passengers. We've got another one and a half hours before the flight arrives. That gives us enough time for me to organize our resources, set up the logistics, uh, get our tables positioned so that when the passengers come off, they will be able to see us. Quentin has an hour to get ready for the plane's arrival. Later that night, Jean carries out her cabin preparations. The team is almost ready to accept passengers. Just a reminder, your Wi-Fi GSM is operational and we'll start working for 45 minutes after the takeoff. So for now, I'm doing my equipment check and I'll do a reporting later. Okay. Life jacket, we've got a mask, the seatbelt, the cart. But I guess a lot of people would think that, well, once we touch down, you know, we get to travel, we have for like wine and dine, shopping. But actually, honestly, what we really need to do is have a good shower and an awesome sleep. We really need that. With all passengers on board, Jean's Paris flight departs on time. SQ401 from Delhi, however, is arriving one and a half hours later than scheduled. Station manager Quinton Chin is standing by to assist passengers with connections. We've got to put ourselves in our customer's shoes. They would have missed an important event, they would have missed some important business meetings. But uh, if you're flying on Singapore Airlines, rest assured, we'll be here to assist you. We get yourself being rebooked on a flight, making sure you have a good night's rest before your next flight. All this will be organized for our passengers. We've got SQ401 coming in late today. Yeah, STA 1715 and ETA 1853. We have a total of 28 passengers who will disconnect their flight. For the rest of them, we will just bring them up here. We will just issue them their new boarding passes and their meal vouchers and hotel vouchers. Uh. Okay, in addition to that, we have already sent a message to the pilot and we have asked them to move the passengers from economy class to business class so that they can deboard the plane earlier. As the team scrambles to get ready, the plane arrives. Okay, looks like we're all set and ready. 
it is the calm before the storm. When the passengers come out, you can expect organised chaos because there will be a lot of passengers who will be worried about their connecting flights. But of course, once they see Singapore Airlines ground staff ready to assist them, they will feel assured knowing that we are here to help them. Connection. Passengers with connections. Hi, good evening. Welcome. Passengers with connections. Passengers with connections. Sir, do you have a connection? Yeah. Going to Perth. Come, come this way, yeah. Flight to Christchurch. We have anxious passengers who are worried about their next flight. Yeah, you have time to catch a flight. Don't worry. And with all these challenges, it really stretches you as an individual. Yeah, right. I'm so sorry. What's going to happen is that we will provide you with a very comfortable stay at the Crown Plaza Airport Hotel. Okay. You need to go to the transfer desk. Okay, th this is the best option too, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> With the passengers assisted, Quentin can take a breather. One flight down. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> all right, one flight down, all taken care of. I think most of our passengers are quite happy with our arrangements. All right, good job, everybody. Thank you for your help. Yeah. It's not only the frontline team who are having a busy day. Behind the scenes at Singapore Airlines, work is hotting up. Completing the 5,000-kilometer round trip to Hong Kong, Captain Chan lands in Singapore. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard. For every pilot, when they sense the aircraft touch down nicely, there is just this acceleration, ah, oh, this is nice. When I come back, it's a mission accomplished, I finish my crew operating pattern and I said, okay, when is my next one? <laughs> I want to go again. <laughs> Captain Chan will now begin his other set of duties with the airline, overseeing flight crew training for Singapore Airlines. The airline selects cadet pilots from a year-round recruitment exercise. In 2016, 100 embarked on the two-year pilot training program. What we want to put into them is uh, the sense of uh, belonging to SIA and a sense of being a professional pilot. Pilot that is taken to a lifelong learning. At the same time, a person that is confident enough to take a leadership role. Most likely when you're checking, is standing. One of the new graduates is Melvin Sim, now a first officer. Becoming a pilot was a child ambition. Now I can look out of the cockpit and I just look at the ground, you know, going away from me. And it's just an amazing feeling. Today, Melvin has a compulsory six-month proficiency assessment carried out on a Boeing 777 simulator. Captain Bosco will be carrying out the assessment and performing duties of air traffic control and in-flight supervisor, while Captain Chan is acting as co-pilot. The assessment will take two hours, challenging Melvin's flying skills and simulating potential emergency scenarios. Okay, uh, Melvin, as brief, we're going to run a series of uh, exercises. Yep. Some may be predictive, some may be actual. Yep. So you just react accordingly, okay? Okay, ready? Ready. Okay, Captain. Ready. Yep, ready. What would consider a competent pilot? Number one, he'll be very calm and composed. He will know his procedures. He will cooperate and coordinate with his crew. And most importantly, how does he come to uh, making his decision? Clear for takeoff, runway 3-4. 80 knots. If Melvin fails to meet the grade, he could be grounded. I don't know what to expect. I don't really think of it as uh, losing my wings or, you know, losing my license. It's just to, to feel competent when I go for actual flights. And then at the end of the day, is to make sure that all the flights are safe. Speed in level. The simulator mirrors the exact cabin specifications of a real 777. And first up, simulated terrain avoidance exercises. Next trust. Next trust. All the terrain. And low terrain. Okay, climbing now, 5,000. I'm performing my co pilot role by just giving him enough support but not leading him. So that he makes all the decisions. Stabilize. Going around. Toga, toga. Which year? 
wind shear is a sudden change of wind speed and direction that pilots must be alert for during takeoff and landing. Train going down, thousand feet per minute now. I just go for really fast. Speed one one eight. Check. Okay, train reversing now, increasing. Yeah. Melvin correctly adjusts the aircraft's pitch to exit the wind shear zone. Pulling up. Well, yes, yeah, you're not out of wind shear yet. Okay, not out of wind shear yet. I think most of the decisions that a pilot take has a compressed time element. Most of our flying life, everything is routine. But when something happens, you are expected to make a decision in a couple of seconds. Singapore Airlines may now be a world-famous name, but the airline began as part of regional carrier Malayan Airways. But in 1972, they burst onto the international scene with an impressive new fleet. A new giant that's more than just another jumbo. For us, it was international all the way. Well, in those days, we were the challengers. We just wanted to make sure we had a product that was attractive to the passenger. We were expanding nicely, getting more aircraft and getting new types of aircraft and uh, flying to new destinations. So all that helped. As the industry expanded through the 1980s and 90s, the airline kept up. Fast forward to 2017, and it flies 19 million passengers a year to over 60 destinations in more than 30 countries. The airline's growth reflects the trajectory of the island nation it calls home. We have to compete right from the beginning, just like Singapore. We don't shy away from competition. We see the competition. We say, how then do we ensure that we can stay ahead of it? One thing that's very important, that's crucial for this success is really our people. Service is really in their DNA, it's truly so. And many will tell you that if you uh, cut their vein, it, the blood is blue. Blue being our corporate colour. It's not only the frontline team responsible for the airline's success, there are over 24,000 staff across the group's operation network. The airline's fleet of 109 aircraft are looked after by Singapore Airlines engineering company. A plane is like a car. It flies a certain number of flight hours or flight cycle. It has to come in for a certain maintenance like changing of engine oil or even changing of engines. The ground time is precious. As long as it's not flying, it's not making money for the airlines. Aircraft come into the hangars following an average of 1,200 flight hours. There are 22 workshops, completing maintenance, repair and overhaul work. This includes wing and engine checks, as well as aircraft painting, with the biggest planes requiring up to 1,000 litres of paint. Overseeing the operations is Chong Ka Meng. The hangar goes round the clock, seven days a week, all year round, and um, everybody's always running to make sure that things are happening. Singapore Airlines' fleet has an average age of seven years and nine months, some of the youngest in the industry. The newest addition is the 253-passenger Airbus A350, designed to be a more fuel-efficient long-haul carrier. The airline is banking on its success, with 11 in operation and another 56 on order. In just under an hour, the engineering team will be parking this megaton giant. Another massive operation at Singapore Airlines is the kitchens, which work 24-7 to produce over 15 million meals a year. Every day, approximately 42,000 are prepared by catering partner SATs, blast chilled and sent to the airport before flights. The airline's menu range has over a thousand different meals, and it rotates regularly. The in-flight services team overseeing the work, Richard Nio and Paolo Zambrano. 
pieces of papaya marinated, and then that's it. Just a nice papaya salad. With this thickness, do you think it'll turn soggy? From the ingredient combination and the flavor of the dish, there is an intensive work around weight and specs. We always have a joke internally that yeah. we we'll say that uh, I go around and mess it up, and Richard comes and <laughs> clean it up, kind of, and, and fix it for. <laughs> The team don't just oversee the menus. Richard carries out daily spot checks to ensure the kitchens are up to scratch. I was trained as a chef. I started off with a hotel and then I joined Airline Environment. Before entering the kitchen, Richard passes through an air shower, which reduces the risk of contamination. I enjoy coming to the kitchen every day to ensure that the quality is good. Is that a vinegar inside of water? When you're making thousands of meals a day, managing quality is essential. We will be going to check to ensure that the, the consistency, the, the weight and everything is followed according to our guidelines. Is there any chance that we can get a little bit more brown color on the outside, more, mm. more caramelized on the meat, mm. so that you get that uh, barbecue flavor on that? Some dishes have been made the same way since the airline's inception. We pride ourselves as a Singapore airline and we need to ensure that uh, whatever food that we serve on board is authentic. Good balance of yep. uh, meat yes, and uh, a yes. little bit of fat. Every satay, the meat is killed by manually. At the same time, we are still 